Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you. Um, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair Vengeance K90. Now, a lot of you have been asking me to look at more kind of peripherals and stuff. And with the uh, uh, Corsair releasing all these new ranges of stuff that they're going to be doing, I thought it would be a perfect excuse for us to start having a look at them together. Now, I will say that if you go to the clip link underneath, the main review, the written review, and all the testing has been done by Brian, um, as I'm sure many of you are aware from the other videos, uh, gaming with keyboards and stuff like that isn't necessarily my strong point. Um, so I've relied on Brian to do the main review for this, and I'm just doing like a uh, subsidiary kind of video for him to look at the aesthetics, uh, and also to kind of pass my kind of judgment over the top of it as well but the, the most part of it's been done by Brian just to make things perfectly clear if we have a look at the box uh, got a little window over on this side and obviously the, the massive vengeance logo on the front and for to be perfectly honest with you, if this was stood in a shop the packaging's great because it's certainly eye-catching um, and there's a lot of info around the outside about customizable G keys the fact that it's got the cherry red mechanical key switches we go round to the back, um, basically the, this, this down this side, basically it says cherry red mechanical key switches, 18 dedicated customizable G keys and it, underneath it says 18 use programmer or record on the fly macro keys for easy single keystroke access to up to 54 of your favourite presets and combos. Full key matrix and anti-ghosting, 20 key rollover with, with USB, professional grade um, brushed aluminium chassis with laser etched backlit keys, that sounds really nice already. Fully customizable profiles with the Vengeance gaming software. Um, but enough of the uh, me chatting away about it, what I'm going to do is uh, open the box. And it's nice that the stickers come off and it's not ripped half the box apart, which doesn't happen very often, but anyway. Let's get this puppy out of the box. Now it's a fairly big keyboard, guys. And I do, by fairly big, I mean it's massive. It's very wide. Um, good way to kind of judge it, really, as I'm disposing of the packaging, which is more than likely going to fall down at some point in the video, is the fact that you've got like the full-size keyboard there. You've got the number pad. And you've also got the uh, the G keys on the left hand side, which is why it makes it feel that much wider. Now, if I take the, the keyboard itself out, it's actually a double layer package. I've just noticed. If you have a look, there's two separate layers. So if I take the keyboard out now, oh my god, that cable is just massive. This, honestly, guys look at how thick that cable is and it's all braided and there's actually two USB keys uh, on it connectors I should say so I'm assuming that you've got one for the keyboard and then one for a full speed pass through here because there's a USB key here but this braided cable is so thick and it's soft as well it's actually really nice I know I get all anal about the details sometimes, but I'm just trying to bring it up so that you can get a clear look at that cable. It's lush. Anyway, if we move this to the side, what else have we got in the bottom of the box? Oh, it's the hand rest, or the wrist rest, I should say. So, what I'm going to do is move the packaging out of the way. I'll give you a look at this on the table. I think this wrist rest goes over the front. Again, I'm doing this because one hand. Oh, it's really nice. I'm not so sure I would use that wrist rest myself. But I do like it. I do like it a lot. Anyway, um, this uh, silver part, I'm going to actually zoom you in a bit. This silver part is brushed aluminium aluminium I always get that wrong um, so you've got like an entire brush layer over the top now these cherry red mechanical keys I'm sure there are a lot of gamers out there that know exactly what these are and stuff I've heard about them on the um, uh, cooler master stuff before 
but I've never actually really had a proper chance to use them. And I've got to admit, I'm just turning it towards myself here. Um, they, they do feel really nice. It's a really slick mechanical key. It's quite a loud typer. Uh, up in this top right hand corner, it looks like that's a volume key and it's just a roller. I really like the idea of that, to be perfectly honest with you. Mute key there, you've got light and buttons, windows buttons up the top here. You've got some uh, multimedia keys as well, you've got stop, backwards, forward, play and pause. Obviously your normal uh, kind of number key layout. Now we've got some uh, buttons up the top here, and I'm pretty sure that MR's got to be for record, but as I've said, literally looking at you with this on the fly. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the camera off so we can give you a proper look round. Proper old school TTL video where we get the old camera right down low so that you can have a look. But it all does look very much the part. The laser etched backlit keys do look lovely. Obviously we've not seen them lit up yet. There we go, it's focused. But we will do. You can see the brush quite nicely there as well. It's all like that. It does look quite nice and does catch the light. Now, you can see it without the um, thumb uh, wrist rest, but basically it all has to clip on. I'd have to put it back on a tripod and try and get this done. Just so that you can get, I can give you a quick look of it with the uh, wrist rest on. Pretty sure it just slides over like there we go. It snaps into place. You can screw it in the side so it does. Um, just trying to get it straight on the camera. So it does lock into place, but obviously I've just pushed this over so it gives you a quick look. And I'm just going to kind of, I've got to admit, it does. Make, give you a nice guide for your hands and kind of bring you up all level but I'm trying to do this so I'm actually you know kind of showing you on camera um, has it got any of those little ah uh -huh, it has it's got the uh, height adjusters at the back ah uh, now that's better that actually feels quite comfortable to me I think I'm going to go and spend a little bit of time writing on this so I can give you a a better idea on uh, my point of view but what I'm going to do now is that there is some software that you have to download for it as well so that you can uh, do the macros and stuff um, and you've got different lighting levels and stuff on it as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away get this attached to a rig and uh, we'll come back and we'll have a look at the lighting and stuff in the dark and uh, give it a good once over okay then guys and girlies on to the software for the K90. One thing I will, uh, I am kind of like knelt down trying to use this, but basically we've got uh, the MR button here, which is the memory record, and then we've got M1, M2, and M3, and these are the three different memory banks. Now on the side of the keyboard, as you can see here, you've got all these G buttons. So you've got 18 G buttons. Now that's 18 G buttons per one of these memory banks. So you've got three lots of 18 that you can basically have your macro key set up for. So essentially you could have the macro key uh, and you can have three your three favourite games and have 18 macro keys for each one. Uh, one thing I will say is for me personally, well I'm not really much of a gamer, these would be quite handy because you can set them to do anything that you want, uh, including like enters for in programs and stuff like that. So I could set these for an automated YouTube response if I wanted to. I could set the M1 and basically what you do is press the MR button and you choose your, um, you select the M1, sorry, press MR, select the key that you want to do, select your macro which we'll just call Tiny Tom Logan. So you've got Tiny Tom Logan and then all you do is you hit your MR button again and that's it. And that's it recorded and saved. Um, so it's, it's really not that difficult at all. You don't even have to use the software. You can do it manually on the keyboard if you want. Um, 
Now I've cleared that off again. There's lots of uh, in-depth advanced options so you can set basic commands, advanced commands and your delay options and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, for those of you hardcore gamers out there, you'll, you'll really like this. And you've got profiles and stuff that you can set and save as well. You've even got manual control uh, with the software over the keyboard lighting. Now the keyboard lighting, I've got to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all the lights off in the room and we'll have a look at the lighting itself because aesthetically this keyboard is gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to break the keyboard off quickly now. Keyboard. <laughs> I'm going to break the camera off quickly now and set up so we can show you this at night. Right then peeps, all the buttons that you can see lit up at this present moment in time are here, the MR button, there the M1 button, but if I've hit M2 you can see me change them up to M3 so we can move them back. And then up in this top left hand corner we've got the number lock on and the caps lock, so I'll turn the caps lock off as well so you can see me doing that. Right, but there is a button up here, you can't actually see me pressing it at the moment, it's so dark, but if I press it once, that is the keyboard lit up 33%. Uh, Hit it again, that is 66%. Hit it again, and that's on its full brightness. Now, I do, you know, I am fully aware that my camera is probably not going to show this up perfectly, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to readjust the camera. Now, we've, I've shown you from above just so that you can see that a little bit better. Now, the keys, if I zoom you in, I'm hoping the camera will focus. Oh, yeah, it does. Look at that. Honestly, guys, this looks amazing because the letters are, um, uh, like they said, laser etched, and you've got the backlight for the keys, but it also backlights onto the brushed anemillion of the um, board as well. If I scroll over there, Honestly, this thing looks amazing. I'm, I, yeah, I'm flabbergasted with this, I, how much I like it. Really, really is nice. What I'm just going to do though, is just turn the lights on quickly so we've got a bit of background light. There we go. So you can actually see it with some light as well. So that you can see it. There we go. I'll zoom out a little bit. There we go really really does look the part really does um, one thing I will say is that uh, when reading up about this I said about the long stroke for the keys and the fact that it seemed like it was, it was a long way down to press the buttons and instinctively you feel like you have to press the buttons right the way down but it's actually only a two millimeter activation so you can near enough just brush over the top of the keys and it works um, I don't know really whether that's something for you gamers, you know, how much you're going to like that. But if I just readjust the camera again, what I'm going to do is uh, zoom you in on probably what I think, other than the lights, is my favourite part of this keyboard. There you go. And that's this. That is your volume control button. It's just a simple scroll wheel. And Honestly, that's, a, that's aluminium as well to match the base. Um, and it is so slick to use, it's unreal. None of this kind of smacking buttons, do you know what I mean, to go up and down on your key. I mean, I normally have my windows turned right up anyway. But for those of you that are going to use this to turn your volume up and down on your rig, you are going to love it. This will become something that you can't live without, or at least it would be something that I couldn't live without. So if I just zoom out again briefly, remove the camera, and I'm moving the camera a lot, but I'm just trying to get it so that you can see. There we go. I know the camera's going to go skits and we keep turning the lights on and off, but I think it's worth it because it's been a long time since a, a keyboard aesthetically for me has been quite so pleasing. Um, but what I'm going to do now is we're going to break on, give you a, a conclusion, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah, let's uh, get the camera redone and moved again and uh, do the conclusion. 
Okay then guys, so on to the conclusion and I'll tell you the award and then we'll talk about everything else afterwards and uh, we're going to give it a gold award. Now this is uh, Brian's choice of the gold award because obviously the, the main written review, if you click the link underneath, it was done uh, by Brian on the site. Uh, and that's because he uh, lives and breathes gaming. He can pick up small, you know, a lot smaller details with the way things work and don't necessarily work um, than I can because I don't spend enough time just playing, uh, you know, like keyboard games. The only time I'm really doing it is when I'm testing stuff. I don't really do it for fun like he does. He'll sit up to five o'clock in the morning playing stuff just because he wants to, like I would think all of you guys do as well. Um, so. Why do we like the keyboard? Well, and I, well, we'll start off with what I like about it, to be perfectly honest with you. If you want to see Brian's opinions, uh, you can go and see the full review. Like I said, click the link underneath. For me, it's, it's, I love the aesthetics of it. It's lovely. That brushed aluminium just you know, screams quality to me. The, uh, the volume button, that little scroller, it's so simple, but it just rolls really nice. It's actually got a textured machine surface. It's lovely. Just Honestly, it's just a really small thing, but I really, really like it. Um, the, the keys are obviously laserette, so they're very clean, but they, they, you've got the, the letters are all lit up. But you've also got the backlight as well, so it lights up a bit of the keyboard. It's very, do you know what I mean, just to look at it, it's quite a ple you know, aesthetically pleasing. The, uh, the wrist rest, stroke palm rest, whatever you want to call it, the wrist rest, well, I've got to admit, when I first got out of the box, I didn't like it, but I actually prefer using it now because I ended up, uh, I've recorded the beginning and the end of this video at different times, and um, I've used it on my main rig for about a week now. Now, uh, when using it, uh, it initially, where the, you've got this extra bit on the left, I kept putting my hand right to the outside to do like caps lock and shift and stuff like that, and that's just because you get used to the way things are laid out. So you give yourself a couple of days and you do find yourself adapting fairly quickly. It's all about muscle memory. Um, and I did find after a, two or three days, that I, when I eventually swapped it back around and put my old one back on, I was putting my hand back off the keyboard again. It's, it's quite weird. Um, but anyway, you do adapt. Um, it is the, the keys, as I said, you do, and when you first start using it, think that you've got to hit them all the way to the end of the stroke every time. You, if you, you can just brush them, it's just a two millimeter actuation on it, and it really is. And so you can, you don't have to pang them all the way down. So one of those kind of like late night gaming strikes where you think that you may have missed the key, you're probably gonna hit it anyway. Uh, the lights at night are lovely. Um, you can just kind of like sit there and work away just no lights on in the room. Um, you don't even really need the lights from your, uh, your your monitors shining on or anything. Do you know what I mean? You look down and everything's so clear. It's brilliant. And but the good thing is, is that if you're watching a film or something, you may want, not want your keyboard lit up or something like that. It's just so simple just to be able to turn it off again. But I've got to admit, I normally leave them on max because they look lovely. Um, the fact that you've got these three memory buttons for the macro, so you can have three sets of 18 for completely different things. So if, like me, you might want one for just normal, like a paragraph that gets banged out um, for like a, 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 a reply or something, like an automated reply, or you can have like your three di um, different games that you want different macros for each thing, or even, not being funny, say for argument's sake, you only use six macros for each game, rather than having to remember to put your hand down, you could just quite literally have the first six keys program but on the three different memories and it is pretty the software is pretty intuitive once you get used to you know hitting the memory but you setting the sorry the g key that you want to use hitting the memory button doing your macro and then hitting the memory button again it's it's dead simple really is dead simple um so i think considering this is the top end of the first lot of keyboards that corsair have brought to the market yeah the price a lot of people are going to think £110 is going to make their eyes water, but like I said, it's built like a tank. The aesthetics on it are lovely. Um, it honestly does look like it would last you for a lifetime. Um, I mean, it, even down just to the massively thick braided cable, looks like it's been ripped straight out of a tank or something, because it's just so burly, it's unreal. Um, I think Corsair have done an amazing job, and that's why, well, Brian's given it a gold award, but to be perfectly honest with you, I think I would have given it a gold award as well. 
Um, but we will be covering at a later date the, um, the M90, which is the mouse, and we've also got the K60 and the K uh, and the M60, so the, the lower down keyboard and mouse as well. And we'll get around to the headsets as well. So it's just the first kind of batch of this kind of stuff that we're going to be doing. It's not just going to be the Corsair stuff, um, but obviously, uh, do you know what I mean? These got released. Um, and I thought, right, it's time to start doing these things because everyone in YouTube land has been asking for it. Uh, so please don't forget to comment underneath. Uh, let me know your thoughts on not only the video, but your thoughts on uh, the, the keyboard, more importantly. And also, if this is the first video of mine that you've found, if you like the videos, hit the subscribe button. There's a lot of mental stuff normally going on on this channel. Uh, and there's a very dedicated bunch of followers as well that if you do ever have any questions, I'm sure they'll be able to help you. Also underneath, it's worth noting that the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page is linked and uh, that again, we get up to some crazy stuff on there with crazy Photoshop competitions and you also get to hear about uh, reviews and stuff um, before they actually go live and I normally sneak results up and so, you know certain things like that and it's, it's a really close-knit community. But I'm going massively off topic, so I'm going to say congratulations uh, Corsair with your Vengeance K90 which has just won the OC3D Gold Award, and we look forward to doing more stuff. But for now, at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.